Hey guys, Buffer Game Bad today, beginning our video, and today we will be converting the KV Broadside Shotgun or the Vepper 12 into the KL 12 Elite Shotgun from Dissident Arms. So, big shout out to Belor and the Discord and over on YouTube for shooting this one over to me as an idea for this shotgun. So, cheeky freaky to you, brother. Uh, this is actually a really cool conversion. I'm really glad they incorporated this, uh, these handguards and everything into the game. Pretty much a one for one uh, conversion, minus a few things here. So, Let's go ahead and back out. We'll cover this firing range and then jump into the gameplay for this weapon. So backing out here, you can see the final design. Now again, for this weapon to unlock it, you can get it obviously in the new battle pass here. The easiest way to get it is right here at B4. So you just need to go from B0 over to B2 and then to B4. So you just need to unlock, I think it'll be 5, 10, 15 tokens, I believe, to unlock those ones. So pretty easy. B0, B2, and then over to B4, and you have it right there. You can see here the Vepper 12 shotgun. So let's go ahead and we will back out, go back to our uh, weapon. So here is the KV broadside final conversion. So at base, we'll go ahead and select, reselect it here, the base Vepper 12. Here's the, the first version of this, the Vepper 12. You can see, now we'll get into some more details about this, but it is, you may see some very, some big similarities to the receiver here now you can see it's obviously part of the cast off platform for a reason because it is essentially it's based on an rpk receiver is what is used for this shotgun so it does look very similar specifically to the rpk 203 with that style handguard so let's go ahead and we'll select it now the first attachments here that we're going to want are going to be we can start with the muzzle device so the kl 12 shotgun here comes with in real life what's called the uh offered by by dissident arms it's a phoenix one compensator comes with this so the closest thing that i could really find to it i thought looked very similar to this one right here the rmge7 gonna give you horizontal control vertical control cons of the eating out sight speed and the aiming stability so we'll select that one but obviously you do have a lot of really cool <laughs> options here available with with this shotgun um that look great these big fat brakes on there too look great and you obviously have the suppressors which is really nice so we'll go ahead and select the rmge7 now for the barrel option this is going to be a key one so this at arms offers what is a for the kl12 a 16 inch uh m lock handguard with a 19 inch barrel so the closest one to that we have these two options here the ZLR Sport XT and the ZLR, uh, ZLR Sport 8. So the only distance is one is about four to five inches longer than the other, the 8, and the XT is a little bit shorter. So we're actually going to be going with the uh, XT here, going to give us the bullet velocity, damage range, recoil control, hip fire accuracy, with the cons being the in down sight speed, movement speed, and the hip recoil control. Obviously, you could go with the Sport 8 as well if you want better damage at range, but. To more closely resemble the real life version of the KL12 Elite, we're going to want the Sport XT. So we'll select that. Really nice looking handguard there with the M locks. And uh, next up, we will go for the buttstock option. So for the buttstock, um, KL12 is offered with a variety of different buttstocks. But for this one here, they have an AR stock adapter and they have this really unique looking handguard on here, which is really nice looking. So this is, this is essentially, again, another one for one uh, match here with what's offered for the KL12 by dissident arms so we'll go ahead um and select this one you can see the pros and cons here are going to be the aim walking speed sprint speed recoil control with the cons being the aim down sight speed crouch movement speed as well as the aiming stability so we'll go ahead and select that you can see this one also uh folds to the left hand side so we'll go ahead and select that Next up for the magazine, we're going to go with a 12-round shell mag. So it's going to give us the uh, go from 8 rounds of the 12-gauge shotgun to 12 rounds of the 12-gauge shotgun. So it's going to improve our ammo capacity by 4. You can see the cons. They're just going to give us a little bit minor, uh, slower movement speed and handling overall. So we'll go ahead and select that. Then for the final attachment here, for the underbarrel option, this can really be anything you want. You can also swap it out for something. You don't necessarily need a grip. I'm just going to go um try and replicate kind of a zenical grip here i really like this bruin tilt grip it's going to give you the hip fire accuracy hip recoil control and the aim walking steadiness on this and for the blueprint options we're going to go with the uh 
Corporal Slate, or State, excuse me. We'll go ahead and select that one. And this is our final design for the KL-12 Elite. So you can see it here, really nice looking shotgun. Um, now, one thing I want to, we'll go through some things here and then point out something about the handguard. But this is, again, made from an RPK receiver. The really cool, there's a lot of interesting features here uh, with this shotgun, actually, in in real life. So some things here you have with the Vepper are a lot of changes. We have the Picatinny Rail dust cover, which is attached to the hinge. So you can see the hinge there on the front right right where the handguard connects. You can see that it's hinged there, so you can lift up, lift up the Picatinny Rail dust cover without losing zero. You have ambidextrous, whoops, go ahead and... Wouldn't be a conversion video without the private matches kicking us out as per usual. So select back into here and take a look at the uh, weapon. Now it does have fully ambidextrous fire controls. So you have, you can see there right above the pistol grip on the left hand side here. We do have uh, fire controls there as well as the standard AK style fire controls on the right hand side. Pretty, pretty accurate to what we see on the Vepper 12 here. You can see, see that how it extends a little bit further as well a little bit easier ergonomically to um to utilize so it's right there standard ak on the right and then you have ami on the left hand side there above the pistol grip we have the magazine release standard ak uh paddle release now there would be a bolt release typically um inside the trigger guard there but i don't see it here and the animation doesn't utilize that so he actually uses the charging handle in game the uh, ejection port has been extended you can see it there there's almost like a two-piece prong to it, two-piece to it. So that will allow, obviously, 7.62 by 39 and 12 gauge is, is two different sized rounds. So this is extended so we don't have a stove pipe jam. Stove pipe jam would where the round would get caught as the as the uh, as the bolt would close and catch the round before it ejected fully. And they're relatively easy to clear, but obviously that would be a huge problem trying to eject 12 gauge. Uh, from the 762 by 39 ejection port. And then if we go ahead and rotate a little bit more, I think that's relatively the majority of the things I wanted to cover as far as visually that we can see. Now the handguard, I really hope this handguard, some of these handguards translate over to the rest of the cast off platform, specifically the AK-103 and the AK-105, because this is very, very similar to the Troy Industries handguards that are offered for the AKs. So this is it would be a great one. Even if it's just a uh even if it's just a different blueprint option for what is already that longest Zeneco handguard, if they just swapped it cosmetically to make it look like this for a particular blueprint to give us a Troy Industries AK, it would be awesome. So that's really cool. The other thing is that with the buttstock options, the base buttstock that's offered here, this is now interchangeable on all the cast-off platforms, I believe, from what I saw. So you have this stock available now on every single one. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like anything else translates uh, over to the weapon. Now, other options here that you have, you also have a 25-round drum available, which is awesome. Ammunition standard shotgun. We have 12-gauge slug, dragon's breath, and explosives. And... The different barrels here, you can see we have the two sports, which we discussed. The uh, Gunner D20 is a really another really nice uh, key mod handguard here, which would be great. Again, very similar to a Troy Industries handguard for the AKs if they were to swap that over. Um, and you have a lot of very cool looking handguards here. Here's another basically similar to an RPK handguard right there. And then you have more more M-Lock handguards here as well. So, very nice design. Let's go ahead now, and we will take it into the firing range here. Take a look at it. So, take a look at the inspect. Looks really cool. Now, some some cool features here for the Vepper 12 is that the uh, that ch that's that differ from the AK platform is the when you fire off all the rounds, the bolt is held open, whereas other AKs it is not. So, we'll see that here once we empty all of our rounds. Just hit. Hip fire this one. So you see the bolt is already open, and he's going to use the charger handle just to, to close it. In reality, there would be a bolt release in the trigger guard, so you could just do it even quicker. But you can see we already hit it with three. Hip fire, because I'm not running a laser, is obviously abysmal. So you can see that spread. I think we hit that far target twice, maybe. Uh, be pretty hard to hit that just running the 12 gauge. If we were to put on slugs or something like that, it'd definitely be easier, but... 
you can fire it pretty quick. I think that's pretty much the max fire rate that you just saw me do there. I could tap fire it relatively quick, so try to go as fast as I can. And you can see the thing is just a beast. So recoil will show it in game two, but here's the spread. Just hip fire. So you can see you have, I believe it's usually eight. So you have three, six, seven, eight. And then if we aim, you can see a lot tighter. And as far as recoil goes, I mean, it, it recenters pretty quickly. It's going to be kind of hard to see it here, but you're climbing. I mean, it's negligible. It's negligible how, what the climb is there. So very easy to control for a shotgun, especially uh, semi-automatic. And you can essentially make it full auto for the most part there. Really nice looking weapon here. Really enjoy it. Let's go ahead now and we will back out really quick. I want to show you guys the camouflages. So we look at the camos here. Here's the plum camo available or unplumbed as they're calling it here. So this is probably for those of us that bought that plum loving bundle for the AK 104 and they ended up making it some bright purple pink color. So here's the correct plum color back to us so uh maybe that was a mistake and they they gave it this camo instead i don't know but i'm glad they that we have this and i want to definitely apply it to that blueprint that i bought so it doesn't look so ridiculous now that they changed it made it bright pink you have these other ones here for the masteries which um don't look amazing i think they all look decent this last one definitely not my cup of tea but a lot of people like that stuff so that's cool but the unplum looking really cool and i prefer the standard one there as well so Let's go ahead now. That's the final design. Let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay here for this weapon. Now, again, the Vepper 12, we'll go through the Vepper 12 information first, and then I'll go into the Dissident Arms uh, build here that we're covering with the KL-12 Elite. So the Vepper 12 was originally manufactured by Ishmash, and it was uh, originally the intent was to compete with the Saga 12, which is also a, a very well-known Russian shotgun production was moved to uh, Molot or Mo Molot. I'm not sure how to pronounce that Russian name. And I'm not going to even try to pronounce the rest of it. But uh, it is patterned after the original Kalashnikov rifle and built on a heavier RPK light machine gun receiver, as we said. So this thing is place of origin, obviously, Russia. The wars it's seen is Iraq, Syria, as well as war in Afghanistan. And I'm sure it's being utilized a little bit in Ukraine right now as well. Uh, designer is Molot, as we discussed. Manufacturer also Molot. Production took place from 2003 through present. There's quite a few variants as well as aftermarket um, builds, which we're covering here today with the Dissident Arms. You have the mass of the weapon overall without any magazine or any rounds in the magazine. It's going to be 4.2 kilograms to 4.55 kilograms. This one's going to weigh a little bit more, obviously, because it's aftermarket. So we'll get into that later. The length of a base Vepper 12 is going to be 867 through 1227 millimeters. The width of the weapon with the stock folded will be 705 millimeters with the height coming in at 290 millimeters. Now, the cartridges, as we discussed, are that 12 gauge, which comes out to 18.5 by 70. Now, obviously, that's a little bit different than a 762 by 39, which is why they had to extend that ejection port. Um... You also have 12 gauge magnum, which is going to be 18.5 by 76. The action is going to be a gas operated rotating bolt with an effective fire range of 100 meters. The feed system is anywhere from two all the way up to uh, 25, 50 round. You can do it as much as you want, but I think the, the 25 drum is probably the largest they make. I'm sure there's some crazy stuff out there that's larger than 25, but uh, the feed system goes up to that the drum we have here in game at 25 which is really nice the sights are um we have the picatinny rail so you can mount whatever you want on there really nice looking weapon i love the design for the pick rail with the hinged dust cover this is something i i really want to see them incorporate on the um the ak the cast off 762 and the cast off uh 545 as well the 105 and the 103 because this just looks amazing they could even put some of these on the rpk would make a lot of sense also but the kl12 elite from dissident arms has a lot of cool features here added to it it is a 19 inch barrel on here versus what is the um the standard barrel length is i, I think it comes in around uh 12 to 16 inches so a, a extended barrel length of 19. We have the 16-inch M-Lock handguard that they offer here. Again, very reminiscent of a Troy Industries handguard. 
um, here in game. The real life version looks slightly different, but not quite. Um, now, like we mentioned, the last round bolt hold open is a nice feature of all Viper 12s. You also have the bolt release uh, lever, which is typically you are seen in the uh, in the trigger guard inside there, so you don't need to break break your grip. But that doesn't seem to be present here in game. You have the hinged rail dust cover, which we covered. You also have the AR stock adapter, which we have here with this particular butt stock that we use. We have the that AR buffer tube with a different stock on there, which is the one offered, or one of the ones offered through Dissident Arms. You have the uh, left hand charger handle. You have fully ambidextrous fire controls on both sides there. 16 inch M lock, as we discussed, you have extended ambi mag release as well. And so it's going to, in real life, the paddles would stick out to the left or right side a little bit there. So you could hit it on either side instead of straight under, which it shows here in game. Um, there's also the um, race safety is another extended feature here. So they really took all this and kind of it amplified it and, and brought it up to a more modernized weapon. A lot, of, a lot of the things for the AK platform in general are just more uh, older and archaic. So they did a lot of really good things here. You also have in real life the Megpole MOE AK grip, which we have uh, not quite that one here in game, but you can obviously put different ones in there to get it. I, I just chose not to use that attachment. And you have the 12 round magazine on there as well. So this weapon by Dissonant Arms, really nice looking weapon here. Um, it's, it comes in a lot of different, different uh, camouflage designs. So really nice looking gun. I'm a big fan of the Viper 12. It's a lot of fun to use in game, and the Viper 12 in real life just made a lot of, a lot of, I guess, sensible enhancements to the AK platform. Kind of strange they didn't use a lot of these with something like an AK-12, which we're seeing put into service now from the the Russians. Um, it seems like they they really went back to a lot of the old models, and you have things like this with the Vepers, as well as aftermark other aftermarkets like um, like Zeneco. Troy Industries, others here in America also, which have really taken the AK and enhanced it to really what it needs to be to be brought up to spec of the 21st century. Um, the AK-12 seems to not do a lot of that. So it's it's really weird to see here. This particular shotgun is honestly more, more user-friendly and modernized than any of the other AKs in game, uh, especially with that M-Lock handguard. Really, really brings it up to the modern, modern, I guess, uh, standard to compete with a lot of the other rifles. Unfortunately, we only have these attachments available on the shotgun itself for now, but I really can't complain because we do have a lot of Zenico attachments on the other AKs, which is really nice. So if you're enjoying the content, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Again, big shout out to Belor for suggesting this one. This thing's a lot of fun to use in game. Um, also, social media links are located down below in the description. We have Twitch, do some live streams there. We have Discord, really good community there. We're over 500 now, so go ahead and join up there. A lot of like-minded gun nuts <laughs> there uh, in games, and, and we play a lot of variety of games there are covered in the Discord. Best place to get a hold of me are going to be uh, Twitter, Instagram, as well as Discord. All those links are also down below. Let me know your thoughts on this weapon down below. What do you think of Season 2 overall? And I will be announcing probably a giveaway here in tomorrow's video, so uh, keep your eye on that. That video will probably be the one that we're going to be wanting to comment on um, the most for the giveaway. So go ahead and, and check that out tomorrow. Till next time, this is Buffner Gaming with the KL-12 Elite Shotgun from Dissident Arms. Till next time, Buffner Gaming. Out. Get back!